All right, hello. This video is a video on determining the melting points of different metals. So we're gonna be looking at the strength of metallic bonds. This is really similar to looking at the strength of ionic bonds. So there's a video for that if you wanna watch that. It's really similar, but we're gonna look specifically at metals. The um, factors that affect the bond strength are exactly the same. So we'll just apply them uh, in the same way, but the reason that they work the same is slightly different for metals, so we'll talk about that because metallic bonds are a little bit different than an ionic bond. So the first factor that affects the strength of a metallic bond is the charge. So this factor is directly proportional to the bond strength. So if you have a greater charge, then you're going to have a stronger metallic bond, and that's because if the charge is bigger, it means that more electrons were contributed into the sea of electrons that is in the metallic bond, and that will create a stronger bond within the material. Um, and then the other factor is the size of the metal cations that are, that are involved. So if the size of the metal is smaller, then that means the ions can pack closer together. This is similar to ionic compounds. Um, and if they can get closer together, they'll have a greater bond strength. And if we have stronger bonds, we'll have higher melting points. So the two things we're going to look at when we do some of the problems are charge and size. So we'll take a look at just a couple examples from notes. And I'm going to draw little diagrams for these so we can see what's going on. So we want to figure out for each of these pairs which one would have the higher melting point. So in other words, the stronger bond. So the first two we'll look at are potassium and calcium. So first thing I want to do is look on the periodic table where potassium and calcium are located. So I'm gonna draw some little pictures here. So potassium is here, and since it's in group 1A, it's an alkali metal, I know that the charge is going to be positive one. So I'll draw K with the charge of plus, and then calcium's here, it's an alkaline earth metal, so it's gonna have a charge of two plus. So the charge is already different, that's gonna give me one thing to think about when I determine the bond strength. But the other thing to consider is, is the size, right? So charge and size. And if we look at potassium and calcium, they're next to each other on the periodic table. So we know that the trend for atomic radius as we go across, the atoms get smaller. So calcium is going to be slightly smaller than potassium. So I'll show that in my drawing. Okay, so here we have a bigger metal ion and it has a smaller charge. Um, calcium is smaller and has a stronger charge, so it should be an easy choice. We want bigger charges and we want smaller sizes. So calcium gives us both the bigger charge and the smaller size, so it's going to have a stronger bond, which means a higher melting point. So calcium would be the correct answer here. So the next two to compare are strontium and barium. So here we have strontium, um, also an alkaline earth metal. So I know the charge is going to be 2 plus. And then barium here, also an alkaline earth metal, so also 2 plus. So I know that when I consider charges, I'm not going to get anywhere because they have the same charge. So we want bigger charges, but since they're both 2 plus, we can't figure out the answer here. So we need to look at size. So we're going to compare strontium and barium in the same family. So we know that the trend for radius as we go down a family, we're adding energy levels, so it, it will be bigger as we go down. So that means that barium is going to be larger, so I'll show that in my drawing. All right, so if barium's the larger atom, strontium's the smaller atom, we want the smaller one. That will give us a stronger bond. So between strontium and barium, we're gonna pick the smaller one. So strontium will be the correct answer for this. Okay, so very similar to ionic melting points. Hopefully that helps you with your metal melting point determination questions.